10 things that I wish I knew before I started Amazon FBA. What's happening guys, I'm Dan Rogers. And if you're new here, a big welcome. Today I'm giving you the 10 things that I've learned as I've built my own Amazon business. And I urge you, if you're starting, just take the 10 minutes to watch this video through because it could save you months and a lot of money. Now I did wanna start off by saying a huge thank you to each and every one of you who are subscribed here. We just passed 3000 subscribers. I also got this comment today that's what pushes me to keep building this channel I know long term we can have an amazing community here please do subscribe click that like button for me but with that out of the way number one is to start properly now whether you live in the US or UK in an Amazon accepted country or outside of that and you live in a non Amazon accepted country this is actually still important for you if I had known what I know now I would have saved myself probably about three months in the beginning and and over $2,000 in short here, if you don't live in an Amazon accepted country, set up a company in an accepted country. And if you do live in an accepted country and your sign up process is quite easy, just think about this as well, currency conversion. I could have saved thousands of dollars in bank fees if I had started using the currency conversion services I use today from the beginning. Things like World First, there's a lot to go into. If you do wanna learn more, check this video up here or you can find it in the description below. But number one, set yourself up properly in terms of where your company's based or where you are based and also where your bank accounts are based or what currency conversion you use for payments from Amazon. You optimize that structure, you're setting yourself up for the long term and you're gonna boost your profitability. And number two is cash flow. It boggles my mind, but cash flow is never spoken about in this business model and in physical products products, it's incredibly important. It's going to impact the budget for your first product. If I had known more about this in the beginning, I would have had far less situations where I'm trying to get rid of excess stock. You can also check out my cash flow video in the description. In a nutshell, here's what you need to know. When you choose a product and you found a supply and you're about to order the product, you're gonna learn about a landed cost. When I say landed cost, I mean the manufacturing cost and shipping cost. Everything it costs you to get your inventory to the warehouse, okay? That's landed cost. Now, a lot of sellers use the landed cost, let's say it's $3,000 on order one as their full budget. So, okay, I have a budget of 3,000. It's gonna cost me to land the product 3,000, I'm gonna go all in. But that's a mistake because of cash flow. Remember, on your first order, you now need to sell through all of that stock. Additionally, in the beginning, you're gonna have a high ad cost because you don't have reviews, you don't have ranking, you're gonna have to pay to be on the front page. So in short, you're getting money back a little bit slower on order one. But remember, order two is round the corner. You're gonna have to reorder if this product proves itself and put usually a 30% down payment for order two, probably before you've got that 30% back from order one. So here's what I recommend. Figure out your landed cost of your goods and add 30% onto that every time. This way you have padding, you have contingency for the reorder and you're giving yourself flexibility for any contingencies as well. In other words, if your landed cost is going to be $3,000, Add 30% to that, that's $1,000, and you should actually be budgeting for $4,000. That's what you should have in capital before you start your first order. And the reason that's so important is you wanna preserve your ranking and be able to reorder sooner rather than later. Number three, it takes time. This is very important. This is by no means a get-rich-quick scheme, and I've seen far too many videos on quit your job for Amazon FBA. I really do not recommend that because it takes time. Instead, even if you hate your current job, give your job new purpose. Make your job a way of raising capital for the business you're gonna build. That's gonna reinvigorate you and push you towards raising more capital for your actual business that you're building on the side. Private label brands take time. They are not gonna replace your income in a week or a month. They might do so in a year, but remember research, proper product development, launching, gaining reviews, running ads, ranking on page one, optimizing for profitability. These things take time. Then you get to a point where you're ranking on page one with a 
excellent high quality product that's being purchased every day is it worth it 100 percent because then it just sells and you can use your time for other things or scaling your business but it takes time have a long-term mindset on this do not be quitting jobs to start this build up capital and work on this until it replaces your income and gives you that freedom to focus fully on it and number four double down on what's working. If I had done this in the beginning, I would have had far fewer failed products for sure. Don't expand too quickly. I see a lot of sellers often ask this question, how many products do you have? Where that question comes from is wrong in terms of mindset. And I urge you to think about it very differently. At the end of the day, why are you starting this business? You wanna make profit. You wanna build a profitable business. And I can tell you this for sure, one excellent product is a billion times better than three mediocre products. Do not try and expand quickly so you can tell people you have 33 products going. Rather have three amazing products making you a lot of money and allowing you to focus. Each ASIN has a certain amount of work required to bring that ASIN to life. You've got to do your research, you've got to find a supplier, build a relationship with supplier, build listings, photos, copy, etc. To expand quickly, you've got to put out, you've got to outlay all this energy and effort and time and money. Whereas if you focus on making your first product really, really good, it's going to serve you much better and it's going to create efficiency in terms of that. But you should at least be selling through order number two of your first product before you're even considering paying any down payments on the second product. Don't expand too quickly. Number five, don't be afraid of competition. So most successful businesses, brands, often you'll find that it started with some form of passion. These are the things that create enthusiasm and keep people going, keep people working towards making something great. In your research, you're probably going to come across opportunities or products that get you fired up in that same way. Now, one of the things that's probably going to fire you up is sales numbers. And again, if you're going to do this focus strategy of one product, really trying to make one good product in the beginning, you're often going to find it has very good sales, but where there are a lot of sales, there's a lot of competition. Now, although that area might have a lot of competition, I would rather dedicate a lot of time and effort creativity to building a better product in that area because I know long-term that market is going to give me a ton of sales rather than aiming for a low-hanging fruit, low sales, low competition area because it seems safer. You can beat out that competition with time. It often really comes down to who's willing to suffer the most and then they solidify those positions and see amazing sales long term as you've seen in many markets where so same competitors and they're doing a huge amount of sales every single day. So my point really here is don't let competition steer you away from something you really want to build and do and something that gets you fired up. That's most likely what's going to drive you to be successful here and when it gets really tough you're going to have that extra enthusiasm to keep you pushing forward. Number Number six, so be very careful of others' trademarks. I once had an issue with one of Amazon's top competitors. I'm not gonna name them, but I had an issue with them because they came after me for one of my trademarks, which they said was confusingly similar with their name, although we weren't even in the same kind of business model. Thousands of dollars later, I managed to get through this whole thing and sell out the inventory and change the brand name. It's very common that this happens, especially especially in the US market where there's a lot more litigation and, and this type of stuff. But be very careful when you select your brand name, go unique, just make up a name, be fanciful with the name. I'll drop my video to creating your Amazon brand name as well. Do not go anything similar to other big brands. Don't try leverage their brand value at all. Even if you're not trying to do that, just consider if it could be seen like that. Number seven is get real feedback. It's very easy for us to just stay online. We kind of have the blinders on and we do our research and continually build out our business. You can be too close 
to the action to be making the best decisions possible. A good example of this is differentiating. You might see that this product that has you fired up, it has certain frequently bought together with it. And so you just go ahead and do that and, and bundle. But it might not make sense. And so for that reason, at multiple stages of the process, get feedback from objective people. Reference page one and say, would you buy this because of this? Which one would you buy here? Get real feedback. Try mimic what your offering is going to look like on that front page and ask people maybe don't even tell them which one is yours but that's going to give you very useful feedback so you're making decisions based on what customers would buy not what you think is right and number eight is use ocean freight or ocean shipping. If I had done this from the beginning, it would have saved me hundreds of dollars even on those first orders. Air freight is incredibly expensive. And while it is fast, there are also fast boat options or fast ocean freight options. Now the difference in shipping time is usually about 20 to 25 days if uh, you're using fast boat ocean freight. That just doesn't justify the massive premium of air freight. By going with ocean you're going to reduce your product costs and increase profitability dramatically. Additionally if you get good with ocean freight you can do things like full container loads which are going to bring your cost per unit down even more and improve those margins even further. I would just rather wait a couple more days, that extra 20 days or so, to get the inventory in and save a huge amount on that product's cost, boosting those margins way up. In some cases, it might be wise to use air shipping for a portion of your shipment, but in general, it is so much more expensive, it's going to make profitability a really, really tough area, particularly if you have a high ad spend. So in the beginning, this is probably probably one of the worst ways to go about it. Your profit is just going to be squeezed so, so thin. Definitely look at fast boat options, which are still relatively quick. Number nine is take TOS seriously. That's terms of service. Now, Amazon takes their TOS quite seriously and you should too. In the incentivized reviews ban, if you were around for that, or, or you can go read up on it. But in that ban, I had quite a few re reviews removed. Whether that was gray ha hat tactics or not, they were removed really upsetting but you have to understand how TOS works for this kind of reason because of course you don't want your reviews removed. Even if you never use gray hat tactics because let's say you just have an incredibly good review garnering tactic. Let's say you use like many chats or something like that. You still have to consider TOS because even if you're using white hat tactics like in line with TOS and your review rate goes above what Amazon's algorithm is looking for, you're going to be flagged and you're going to probably have reviews removed. So right now the review rate is about 15% of total sales. Whatever you do, you want to ensure that for every 100 sales you make, no more than 15 of those are resulting in reviews. Now unlike Amazon, YouTube doesn't have this type of limit. So I really don't mind if you all go click that like button right now. And number 10, an audience is a gold mine. Every brand owner should be building one of the following two lists, an email list, or a social media audience. Having those engaged followers is going to help you so much with launching new offerings and also getting good feedback on those new offerings because these people are already going to be positively predisposed towards you and, and more forgiving of any shortcomings you might have. To demonstrate this, I coached one seller for about six months and he built this Instagram audience. He launched without PPC and within the first month he was selling over 20 units per day. One thing I have to say here is I've spoken to a lot of sellers and many sellers, many of you guys don't use social media in a personal sense. You actually moved away from it. And I agree, I, I'm similar, but you have to start looking at social media as a tool, not just this place for time wasters or perfect life portrayers, but start looking at it as a tool you can use. You don't have to build it. You could also pay a VA to build this for you or maintain this for you 
you. And in fact, social media management is one of the biggest skills I have seen when looking at VAs. If you wanna check out some VA sites, you can check out onlinejobs.ph is the cheaper side of things, all the way up to things like Task Bullet, which is a bit more expensive. Just be aware, you have to check English proficiency because obviously this is customer facing your social media, but that's a way you're not having to worry about it every day, but it is being built for your brand. And number 11 is click the like button, subscribe and turn on notifications. And this is the most important one, but please comment below. Which of these 10 did you find the most useful? If one's very popular, I'll make a video on that specific one for you. But I do hope this was incredibly helpful for you guys and I'll see you in the next video.